So what will actually happen on March 29th is at the moment entirely uncertain. There seem to be five broad scenarios. The first one is a no deal. Under the Article 50 process, the default position is that the UK will leave the European Union on the 29th of March with no deal. The second option is Theresa May's deal, which has proven pretty unpopular in Parliament. The third option is some form of different withdrawal agreement and negotiated by a new leader, either after a change of leadership by the Conservative Party or perhaps a different party following a general election. The fourth option is to remain in the European Union and you can imagine that will only happen after a referendum. And the fifth option is some form of very soft Brexit like the Norwegian model, which was the UK remaining part of the European Economic Area. In the case of having a deal, so some form of the withdrawal agreement that Theresa May has agreed over the last couple of years, business will continue broadly as it is now. There'll be some tweaks, there'll be some additional red tape and there'll be some difficulties, particularly in areas like immigration. But broadly speaking, the idea is that the current arrangements will continue and businesses will be able to carry on trading with the European Union in exactly the same way that they're doing now. Under a no-deal scenario, the whole picture becomes a lot more uncertain. The government have issued a series of technical notices, as have the European Union, which are basically contingency planning documents aimed at businesses and organisations to help them cope with a situation where the UK crashes out of the European Union without a deal on the 29th of March. In those circumstances, it's likely to have a short-term impact on businesses that do a lot of trade with the European Union, particularly those importing and exporting goods, but also those trading services across the European Union like financial services institutions and organisations. So although the general picture seems quite gloomy, there are some opportunities for business. One of the most obvious areas we're seeing from conversations with clients is that they're using this as an opportunity to make their systems and processes more efficient, automate areas of their business where they think it's appropriate. Despite Brexit, the quality of legal services that you get here will continue to be extremely high. And the UK legal system will continue to be one of the most highly respected in the world.